Good morning, everybody. The book of Ecclesiastes was written by King Solomon at a time in his life when he had turned from the Lord and from the God that he knew as a young man and the God who had so greatly blessed him with wisdom and wealth. He was made wiser than any man that had lived, but his wives that he married began to turn his heart away from God. And so, through disobedience and through walking away, Solomon went on a quest later on in life to try to find life in the world. He called it life under the sun or under heaven. And he tried to use all of his resources, his power and wealth and all that, but he set aside the wisdom of God. And so this is his journal, if you will, of his experiences during that season of his life. And this morning, I'd like us to look at Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 to 8 first. Now, I will read two verses at a time. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck out what, was, what is planted, verse 3 and 4, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. Verses 5 and 6, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. Verses 7 and 8. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. The word time is repeated in this passage more than 20 times. Time constrains us, it's always with us and it influences us all the time. Time just seems to crawl when you are young and when you get a little older, time begins to pick up its pace and then time starts to run. Pretty, pretty soon we say time is flying by. King Solomon is looking at life under the sun without God. And he makes these observations and he gives us 28 of life's activities, things that consume much of our days, and he sets them in juxtaposition, sort of in contrast to one another. So there are 14 positive experiences and 13 negative, so you see, 14 negative, so you see a time to weep and a time to laugh, they are in contrast, a time to break down and a time to build up. Now for many people, happiness depends on what goes on during the day or the, our life. If things don't happen the way we want them to happen, we get so disappointed. Now some people spend their time organizing their time to make sure everything happens the way they want things to happen. The assumption is this, if I can make everything happen the way I want, then I will be happy. But one of the great myths about humanity is that we are, it, the, the greatest myth is that we are in control, you know, but that's far from the truth. So take for example, verse 2a of this passage, it says, a time to be born and a time to die. Birth and death are the two biggest events of our experience and both of them are totally out of our control. Also, our birth and death is not an accident. It is an appointment by God. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 says, It is appointed for men to die once and after that comes judgment. Now because believers know that it's an appointed time, that death is an appointed time by God, we can find great comfort in that. And though we cannot choose the day we are born or the day we die, we can choose the day that we are born again. So we have a spiritual birth. 
You can do that any day. Maybe today is your day that you will admit to God that you are a sinner and that you need Him to save you, to forgive you of, to, to forgive you of your sins. Now, in all of these things, Solomon says, such is life. And that he, he's saying that experiences sort of balance or cancel each other out. And, you know, one thing comes and the other thing will follow. So 28 contrasting experiences. Therefore, if our peace and joy depend on life circumstances, we have our work cut out for us. If we're trying to make sure that we always have these good times, I mean, how can we arrange lives such that we never mourn and we always dance? How can we make sure that we always laugh and we never weep? We cannot do that. It's impossible because that is life under heaven, life under the sun. And I think we all know that to cry at the wrong time is just as bad as laughing at the wrong time. So what should we do? We should cooperate with the seasons that God has set before us. Take for example now verse 2b. It says there is a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. These are farming terms, but we can relate to them. If the apples are not ripe yet, you shouldn't be plucking them. There is a time to put seed into the ground. There is a time to dig stuff up, to plow, to start over, to wait for growth, and then to pluck up. Similarly, similarly, there is a time to break down and a time to build up. There is a time to accumulate possessions and there is another time to simplify and to give things away. Verse 5, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. In order to plant, you have to pick up stones that are in the ground and cast them away. Maybe you put them at the corner of your field, you know, but when you have planted the seeds and you need to set up a boundary wall for security, then you need to gather back these very same stones. Now, for a year or two, due to COVID-19, we all had to refrain from embracing. That was our time to refrain from embracing. But it made us appreciate human contact and community more. And, there's, and then this verse says, there is a time to hold on to people. Hold on and embrace the people. And then there is a time to let go of certain relationships. These are the seasons of life. Verse 7b, time to keep silence and a time to speak. Silence is best in moments of anger. Silence is best when we feel angry. When we are angry, there is a high likelihood that our words will not be produced by the Holy Spirit. Scripture tells us that silence will help us avoid sinning and even gain respect. But fear, lack of self-confidence and anxiety can tempt us to keep our mouth shut when we need to boldly speak in love, the truth in love. When we take a cowardly, quiet back seat when there is injustice, we are doing more harm than good in the silence. Also, if fear is keeping us from sharing the good news of Jesus with others, then clearly our silence is not going to be helpful. Life is full of lots of things, some of which we like and some of which we don't like. King Solomon is challenged and he asks then in verse 9, verse 9, what gain has the worker from his toil? From all that he observed about life, the good and the bad, they cancel each other off. What gain is there from all our toil then? Zero. But then the light of God's wisdom comes upon Solomon when he wrote verse 10. I have seen the busyness that God has given to the children of men to be busy with. Okay, I will read that again. It was wrong. I've seen the business that God has given 
to the children of men to be busy with. In other words, all the highs, all the lows, the good times, the bad, the tears, the laughter, all the planting and tearing down that we are busy with, God gives them to us so that we may look for Him. Because we are created by Him with an eternal desire and the experiences in the world will never fully satisfy us. It may upset you then because you may ask, why would, then give us, why would God then give us this burden of life. And let me remind you of one thing. God laid aside His glory. He stepped down from His throne and became a man. He became a human to experience the, the burden of life. He lived without pain and circumstances. He experienced laughter, mourning, planting, tearing down, weeping and dancing. Jesus shed our life. And yet the Bible says he was a man of sorrow, familiar with grief. So I think he knew more about grief than dancing and, and laughing. He's a God who loves us so much. He comes right alongside us and he says, I understand, I care and I know. So trust me, abide in me and find real joy. Verse 11, he has made everything beautiful in, his, in its time. Also, he has put eternity into man's heart, yet so that he cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. A life without God, my brother and sister, doesn't make sense. There is in an eternity that God placed in our hearts and that eternity has to be factored in. He makes everything beautiful in its time, but that's going to require faith on your part because God is not going to show you, doesn't show a pastor, doesn't show a missionary, God doesn't show any of us the whole picture now. And people may ask me, why do you think the Lord dot dot dot, why do you think God did dot dot dot? And I usually answer, I cannot answer for God because I don't know. I just know that God does everything well. He is for me and He's not against me. And that all things will work together for good for those who love Him and are called according to His purpose. So whatever we go through, it's not just a balancing act or a cancellation. It's the work of God to get us to know Him. Let's look to God in prayer. God, help us to be grateful, grateful to You for teaching us to embrace each season of life. God, thank you for teaching us how to weather each season that comes so that we can focus our thoughts on what is true and what is good and to find joy even when it is not the season we are expecting or hoping for. I thank you, God, for this, for your beautiful word. Help us again always to appreciate you and to thank you in all the seasons of our life. In Jesus' name, Amen.